Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello now let's see Robert Browning the greatest master of dramatic monologue. Let's see the historical and literary context first and then uh, some information about the life of Robert Browning and the poem that we have chosen for this uh, course is Andrea del Sarto published in 1855. We will also see the background to this poem in the case of uh, Andrea, Leonardo and Raphael these were painters and the sources and influences on Robert Browning for writing this poetry. We will discuss some of the themes and techniques that Browning has used in this poem. We also will see uh, one specific case of art register that is many words Browning has used from art. So, we call them art register. We look into the voices that is female or male voices in Andrea del Sarto and finally consider this poem as a dramatic monologue. The historical context goes like this, there were three rulers actually King George the fourth, William the fourth and Queen Victoria. Of course, the longest reigning monarch of this period is Queen Victoria from 1837 to 1901. During this period many reform bills were passed relating to factory acts, famines, rights and also there were many wars fought during this period. Victorian double standards is a concept that is normally related to this period we have to understand how people were behaving personally in one way and publicly in another way. We notice the continuing influence of romantic poets on Victorian poets especially Tennyson and Browning. We find at this time the rise of Elizabeth Barrett that is before her marriage to Robert Browning, Elizabeth Barrett Browning was herself a poet on her own right and then we have Tennyson and lastly we have Browning. Of course, there are many other poets of this period. We will look into the serious examination of the Victorian society by novelists and prose writers as far as this poem is concerned. The character analysis, the psychological probing of Andrea del Sarto is related to how novelists and prose writers analyzed people and society at this time. There was also a scrutiny of social and psychological conditions of human beings from multiple angles several points of view are presented in novels and also in poems as we can see in Andrea del Sarto. The literary context is this poetry was very popular with the Victorians. However, the novel emerged as a dominant art form of this time. Drama did not receive much patronage from the people of uh, Victorian period. In fact, Browning started as a dramatist, he failed in theater and then later succeeded in dramatic poetry with a strong narrative element. The influence of Wordsworth and Shelley continued in Tennyson and Browning respectively. Browning explored different characters from various points of view suggesting multiplicity of truths. So, this idea of explaining truth or understanding truth from multiple angles is uh, very common during this time and that is much more in the 20th century. Poetry and the novel reflected on the Victorian values and also the compromises that the society made at this time. We have many exploratory art forms starting from the pre-Raphaelite poets moving to aestheticism and decadence finally at the end of 19th century. It was in this historical and literary context Robert Browning lived and wrote his poems. He was a son of a failed poet actually and his father was a successful banker. So, Robert Browning had his education at home with a library of 6000 volumes. Browning experimented with narrative, dramatic and lyrical forms and then perfected the art form known as dramatic monologue. He explored 
deviant abnormal characters psychologically in depth in his uh, poems. He married Elizabeth Barrett in 1846 and these two poets became a poet couple or a poetry couple. Uh, Robert Browning influenced pre-Raphaelites that is poets and painters who came after him. He shaped the modernist uh, dramatic monologues of Pound, Eliot, Frost and many other writers who came in the 20th century. In his own time he was faulted for his obscurity but then recognized as a great poet in his own right. Browning is famous for many of his dramatic monologues. Here we have some poems like the Pied Piper of Hamelin, My Lost Duchess, Pippa Passes. Pippa Passes is a poem in which he has outlined his philosophy, God is in heaven, all is right with the world. Now let us move on to this uh, chosen poem, Andrea del Sarto, subtitled called The Faultless Painter. This poem is based on the life of Andrea del Sarto who lived from 1486 to 1530. This poem is a typical dramatic monologue of Robert Browning. It has 267 lines and written in blank verse. There are three verse paragraphs. Section 1 starts from 1 and ends in uh, 243 line and then section 2 begins in line number 244 and end, ends in 266 and the last section has only one line distinguished from the rest of the poem to indicate some speciality about Andrea and also his uh, love Lucretia. Section 1 deals with Andrea's quarrel with his own wife Lucretia and section 2 uh, deals with Andrea's neglect of his family duty and his apocalyptic vision. And lastly, we find Andrea giving ironical bidding adieu to Lucretia. Here we have the pictures of Andrea and also Madonna uh, who was modeled on his own wife Lucretia. The pictures are beautiful and we will see some more pictures now. Here is a Madonna by Leonardo and another Madonna by Raphael. These are well known world famous uh, pictures or paintings. Robert Browning collected his sources from various writings. McEachin, a critic, has identified them here. Giorgio Vasari's Lives of the Painters, first one, second one, Filippo Baldi Nucci's Notes and the third one is Alfred du Musset's a play called Andrea del Sarto written in 1833. The first one is a major source for uh, Browning that is Giorgio Vasari's Lives of the Painters because Vasari was a student of Andrea, a contemporary painter and also a biographer of Andrea. From these sources we find that Andrea was a diffident artist but he was a great uh, painter. Browning misrepresented Andrea as a less than great painter and Lucretia as an adulteress to illustrate his poetic credo that a man should pass his life in a state of divine frustration. So we find some addition of detail in Browning. We also notice such addition of detail in Alfred du Musset that is uh, a character has been added in the play and that is also reflected in Browning's uh, poem. Further we notice the influence of Shakespeare and Dan in uh, Browning. Shakespeare's influence can be seen from plays like Lear that is King Lear, Macbeth and Othello and these plays have the impact on the psychological and spiritual investigation of character or soul in Browning's poem. These are the six uh, aspects of drama, plot, character, thought, diction, melody and spectacle. These have been inherited by Browning and adapted into his uh, poems. In Browning's poem we find self analysis of cause and effect that means there is a clear focus on self recognition and after self examination. Further we find Dan's influence in terms of this conversational tone and dramatic interaction and also interrogation, questions are raised by Browning through his characters. Readers are also invited into the minds of both the speaker and the listener and given a chance 
to enter their own cells that is where we have more involvement in a dramatic monologue by Robert Browning. What are the many themes that we have in this poem? First is the artist, God is the great artist, man also is an artist, major artist and minor artist that is how we see God and man. We also have philosophical and religious themes like one and many, is the whole world one? or is a world made up of many things that is how this problem of one and many is treated in philosophy and also in religion. Further we have one more theme free will and destiny does man have this free will or is man destined to behave in certain ways or live in certain ways. We also have the conflict between body and soul which is very much evident in the poem. We also have the theme of family life as represented in the husband and wife in the case of Andrea and his wife Lucretia. Further we notice the theme of art and morality, does art uh, serve society or does art serve on its own for itself. We have this major theme of identity, how is identity constructed? or how does identity form in human beings. So, critics have noted this gendered construction of the self and the other. There is also the crisis of identity which is very much visible in Andrea del Sarto. We have this voice whose voice is presented in this uh, poem, is it a male voice or is it a female voice, we will spend some time on this separately a little later and also we can notice the myth of Adam and Eve as a background for this whole poem that is how many critics have identified various themes in this poem. What are the techniques that we have in this poem? We can call them poetic devices. We have not read this poem because we are going to have many extracts from this poem for various reasons. Here we have some examples from the poem. Uh, for irony we have this title. In the title itself Andre is called a faultless painter and then at the end of the poem though Andrea does not want his wife to go he says go my love that is a case of irony. We have many examples of paradox here we have two less is more freedom in confinement and how is this less more in the case of painting how is this freedom in confinement superb or useful or valuable for Andrea this is what we have to think about. Andrea we have to remember he is confined to his home now because he came out of France and stayed at home to help his wife. We have the case of metaphor in serpentine beauty, he refers to his own wife's beauty, my serpentine beauty that is why we have this that means he is invoking the serpent from paradise lost or from the bible moon, twilight, bat all these metaphors are used in this poem. We have one example for alliteration here, such frank French eyes and such a fire of coals to live the life grew golden and not grey. Let my hands frame your face in your hair's gold, these are three lines from this uh, poem. And we also have one example for transferred epithet inside the melancholy little house. The house itself is not melancholy, but we have the idea of melancholy being attributed to the house. We continue with uh, techniques, here we look at repetition particularly anaphora. We can also refer to this technique as irony of possession because Andrea wants to possess his wife. We can see how my is used several times my serpentining beauty rounds on rounds, he continues my face, my moon, my everybody's moon, my youth, my hope, my art being all toned down and best of all this, this face beyond this in the background. So, from my this he differentiates, so my beauty, my face, my moon that is Lucretia is not his moon or his face, his hope because she has a lover waiting for her and so she has to go. We also have this repetition and juxtaposition 
uh, we can call this antithesis as well. This looks more like a neoclassical uh, poem, praise them it boils or blade them it boils too. That is how this whole idea of the rhythm we can see from Pope or from Dryden here in this particular line. We continue with the techniques, here we have one rhetorical question, how could it end in any other way, no other way. We have lots of conversational tone throughout the poem, here are some examples, will it tenderly, let us try, well let me think so, love does it please you. This is the kind of uh, conversational tone that we find in Dan and later in uh, Eliot also and many other poets who have followed uh, Browning and Eliot in the 20th century. We can see how Browning creates the atmosphere in these lines, but do not let us quarrel anymore. Now my Lucretia bear with me for once, sit down and all shall happen as you wish. You turn your face, but does it bring your heart? I will work then for your friend's friend, never fear. These are the opening lines of this poem Andrea del Sarto. Now we can see how this poem opens and see how the quarrelsome atmosphere in the family, in the life of Andrea is created here. A triangular relationship is brought into the poem. We have Andrea, we have Lucretia and also we have a friend's friend in whom Lucretia has much interest, for whom Andrea is actually painting and this painting will be sold and the money from that painting will be used by Lucretia to pay the debts of the friend's friend. That is how the whole poem is built up. We have some ambiguity here in the case of Lexis that is word, we have one example in line 52, let it lie. What does this lie mean? Does it mean just lie there, keep it there somewhere? And then the second one, let it tell a lie or let it be a lie. So, just lying there on the table or being there is one thing and telling lie is another thing, falsehood is another thing. So, this kind of ambiguity we find, lexical ambiguity we find in this poem. Similarly, at the level of syntax we have one line, you call me and I came home to your heart. This can be understood in two ways, I came home to your heart as home to your heart as object for this uh, came. So, in this case it can mean I am the home for your heart and in the second one I came home to your heart. So, there is a difference home is associated with uh, came here and then next we have this adjunct to your heart. That means I came to my house to reach or catch your heart. Actually. It was uh, Lucretia who asked Andrea to come back from France to live with him in Italy. That kind of motive is found throughout the poem. Actually, Andrea was working for the king of France, painting or uh, uh, doing whatever the king wanted him to do, but then without uh, the knowledge of the king, without telling the king that he was going home, he left and came here and so he is staying in, in Italy and so the king's men have come to Italy to find out where Andrea is to collect back the money that he had brought from uh, the king and probably to punish him as well. But then now he is confined at home, he cannot go out because the men from France have come here in search of him. Here we have this art register, this is a poem about a painter, so many words used in this poem are all drawn from the field of painting. All these words from altar, art, body, cartoon, if these words are used in a different context they may have some other meaning. Cartoon, chalk, copy, craftsman, drawing, frame, gold, grey, harmony, hue, light, line, model, outline, paint, pencil, piece, serve, shade, shape silver, sketch, smear, soul, trace, twilight, work. These are the words which are associated with painting and also we have the names of the painters and their paintings like Leonardo and Madonna, another painter Michael Angelo, one more Raphael and then we also have another name for Raphael in Urbinate, then we have one Virgin that is Mary Virgin and then the patron of art King Francis. One major question in this poem is, 
whose voice is presented in this poem. Of course, the poem is called Andrea del Sarto. So, primarily the voice of Andrea is found in this poem, but then a feminist critic like Margaret A. Luce has identified the voice of Lucrece also in this poem. Here the words are highlighted which represent the voice of Lucretia. So, this occurs in uh, line number 218 from 218 to 221. Let us but love each other, must you go? That cousin here again, he waits outside, must see you, you and not with me. Those loans, more gaming debts to pay, you smile for that? Margaret A. Luce says, the first half of the line that is, let us but love each other, that alone belongs to Andrea. Similarly, the last half of the line, you smile for that, that also belongs to uh, Andrea, but in between, must you go, that cousin here again, he waits outside, must he see you, see you, not with me, those loans, more gaming debts to pay. The voice of Lucretia comes out in these lines, she says, because in the Victorian society, the voice of women was not given that much importance. So, we have this notion of the voice of women coming out in male discourse. This poem is a very interesting case for feminist study as Margaret A. Luce has shown in her article. In fact, she argues that throughout the poem, Andrea is made into a female, whereas Lucretia is made into a male. So, there is a kind of interchange of identity, male identity or female identity that is seen primarily in terms of domination, who dominates who. Andrea is a passive character and Lucretia becomes a very active character in this uh, poem. We have many terse sayings in this poem, so we have number of quotations we have from this poem. A common grain as silver is everything, so free we seem, so fettered best we are, less is more. Ah, but a man's reach should exceed his grasp, or what is heaven for? All is as God overrules. In this world, who can do a thing will not, and who would do it cannot, I perceive. Yet the will somewhat, somewhat to the power, and thus we half men struggle, and thus we half men struggle. Half men, that is Andrea, and mostly all the Victorian people, maybe all men of that time and thus half men struggle. For Margaret Luce, this particular line is very important because men are not full men, they are only half men and the other half is that is women. God is just, that is a philosophy of Browning or his attitude to life and lastly we have no doubt there is something strikes a balance. We have highlighted differently to indicate that this is a kind of echo that we find in Robert Frost's poem, Mending Wall. There is something that does not love a wall. Such kind of echo or influence is very interesting notice when we read poems by many poets. Now, we come to the last point that is Andrea as a dramatic monologue. We have indicated this uh, Aina bed sessions categories earlier. Now, we will list them and also see the various aspects of dramatic monologue in this poem. The speaker is Andrea del Sarto, the listener is Lucretia, the occasion is evening time, twilight. There is an interaction between the speaker and the listener that is Andrea and Lucretia. They are sitting, holding hands, smiling, listening to each other, uh, moving physically probably. In all this, the most important aspect of this poem is revelation of character or the innermost soul of Andrea and also probably of Lucretia. In this context, we see the passive feminine aspect of Andrea more and the active or masculine aspect of Lucretia much more. We also have this dramatic action. In this case, we find less action but more atmosphere. The action is dramatic because of this conflict between Andrea and Lucretia. Should Lucretia stay with Andrea for his painting or should Lucretia go to her friend's friend to spend her time? We have action in the present that is Lucretia is waiting for her lover and Andrea is pleading with her to stay back so that 
she can spend time with him and that means, and they can draw more and yearn more for her. Here is one but, this is how the whole poem begins, but Browning's use of but in Andrea del Sorto is remarkable. It has many functions to signal the beginning of action in the middle of the whole story, to contrast the character of Andrea with Lucretia, to juxtapose the faultless painter and the faulty husband. Also, we have the comparison between the unwedded painters with the married painter that is Andrea, Leonardo, Raphael, they are not married whereas, this Andrea is married. Further, we have one more to differentiate Victorian poetry from romantic poetry. This kind of intense conflict between human beings we may not find in romantic poetry. There we have more of cosmic transcendental experience, but in the case of Victorian poetry we have down to earth family domestic context. In sum, we have seen the historical and literary context of Robert Browning and his poem Andrea del Sarto, his sources and his influences we saw. We also noticed how Browning was in interested in many painters like Andrea, Leonardo and uh, Raphael and from these Italian sources and literary influences, Browning has written his poem Andrea del Sarto. We examined the themes and techniques and also paid attention to the vocabulary, special vocabulary relating to art as art register. We examined the voices, the female and the male voices in Andrea del Sarto and finally, considered the poem Andrea del Sarto as a dramatic monologue. We have not read some passages from this poem primarily because we have quoted many of the lines from this poem in almost every uh, page or every slide. So, we hope that you will be able to read the poem yourself and understand this poem much better. We have the references for you, thank you.